All right, so let us take a look at data types in Rust, particularly right now, primitive data types, because that's what everyone's gonna be using most commonly. And also casting primitive data types in Rust. Now this is important when you're programming, obviously, because you're gonna need to use specific data types for specific variables. So if you don't already understand a little bit about variables and mutability in Rust, I'll go ahead and put a link to a previous video that I did explaining variables and mutability. It should be the top right corner of the screen somewhere. You'll find it, I don't know. But if you already understand how that works, then let's get into it. All right, so I just have a regular hello world program generated over here in my main.rs file. And obviously I did that using Cargo to build this project. But before I show you guys anything with data types in Rust, should at least let it be known that every value in Rust has to be a specific data type. Unlike JavaScript, where JavaScript, which is what we call a dynamically typed programming language, Rust is a statically typed programming language, okay? So something like JavaScript dynamic, you can make a variable, initialize it equal to one specific data type and then change it to a different data type later. With Rust, you cannot do that. Rust is static or statically typed. And why is that the case? Well, again, that brings us back to what Rust was created to do or how Rust was created to be. Rust is created to be a very strong and independent Pokemon that does not need a Pokemon trainer, okay? Rust is built for tough. Build Rust tough, TM. But also, mechanically speaking, behind the language itself, comparing it to something like JavaScript that is what we call just in time compiled. Rust is compiled all at once and then ran, okay? Since that's the case, Rust needs to know the types of all the variables already at compile time. And you guys will see this in a second, but usually the compiler is gonna basically already kind of know what type of data type you are wanting or trying to use. If, if it doesn't know what you want, it's gonna default to specific things, okay? So with that said, no, you don't have to particularly tell it every single time, quote unquote, but behind the scenes of what you're typing, Rust is going to automatically declare it to be a specific type. Once it's that type, it cannot be changed to another type unless you parse it. So let's get into that in one second. Before I do that, I'll just show you guys an example of the difference between how you would kind of do something like this in JavaScript versus Rust, okay? All right, so in JavaScript, let's just say I want to make a variable called x and set it equal to some kind of number primitive data type, an integer. I would say in JavaScript, something like let x equal 100. And then I could say x equals 100. And as you guys can see, uh, I didn't even compile it yet. I just saved the file and we already have a red squiggly line error telling us, hey, mismatch types, expected integer, found string. This will work fine in JavaScript. Oh, and by the way, guys, this colon i32, I did not type this. My plugin in Visual Studio's code did this for me. This just lets us know that Rust itself has decided to default this variable to an i32. And if you don't know what an i32 is yet, we're gonna explain that, don't worry. However, you could type this exactly like this. So I could say x colon i32 equals 100. Now, obviously nothing changed because the exact same thing is wrong with it. We can't, we're trying to change one type dynamically to another type. And again, you could do this in JavaScript, but you can't do this in Rust, at least not like this, okay? Oh, actually, actually guys, before I go on any further, so if you guys remember that I typed this out, this colon base i32, basically forcibly defining what exact primitive type this is gonna be, that it defaulted to an i32 on its own. Again, if you don't know what an i32 is, don't worry, we're getting right there, be patient. Back to when I had it just like this, guys, and then Visual Studio's code basically put this little highlight right here for me. The purpose of me telling you guys this is because earlier when I was referring to the fact that the compiler for us can usually infer what type of type we want to use or we're trying to use based on the value and or how we're using the variable. In this case, line four, obviously right-hand side of the equal sign is a number. That's what the compiler did. It said, hey, you know what? We're pretty sure you wanna have an i32. For the most part, depending on what number it is that you type, it is indeed just gonna default to an i32. I did wanna point that out to you guys. How would I do this in Rust? Well, basically you can't. I can't just on the fly change the value from one type to another, right? Now, there are some little steps that we can do. I could like call two string, to this guy, although this would probably still not gonna work because what we have to do is we have to make a temp variable to shove this into there and then set the temp variable equal to X plus whatever. Anyway, that's not important. What I do wanna show you guys is how to actually cast from one type to another. 
And I know I kept saying, if you don't know what type I32 is, don't worry, we're gonna get there. Let me go through some of these data types really quick first for you guys before I show you guys how to do that. All right, so let me just nuke all of this in here and let's go over scalar data types, the basic ones, all right? Basically anything in Rust that's gonna have a single value. And Rust happens to have four primary scalar types, integers, floating point numbers, booleans, and characters. So you probably recognize these from other programming languages. Let's actually take a look at how they work inside of Rust itself. An integer is a number without a fractional component. It's a whole number. So not like 3.14 apple pie, that's gonna not be in it a whole number. That, that would just be a floating point number, one of the floating point numbers. However, if you take a look at this chart right here, I can show you guys all the integer types in Rust that are offered. So we have an 8-bit integer, both signed or unsigned versions we could use. Same for 16, 32, 64, and 128 bit. And what would denote the difference between these? Well, all the signed integers are gonna have an I in front of them, and all the unsigned integers are gonna have a U in front of them. Following that I or U, we're either gonna put an 8, 16, 32, 64, or 128, depending on what exact one we wanna use. So what would be a quick example of that? So if I said let X colon I8 equal five, there you go. We have our 8-bit signed integer. Now if I say let y colon unsigned 8 equal 10, now we have an unsigned 8-bit integer. Let z colon i 16 equal 10. In this case, we have a 16-bit signed integer. Let a colon u 16 equal 10. There we have our unsigned 16-bit integer. Let b colon i32 equal 10. There you go, there's our signed 32-bit integer. Let's see colon u32 equal 10. There's our unsigned 32-bit integer and so on and so forth, guys. So on and so forth all the way until we go through each one of these going up to 128 bits. There's also an i size and a u size for length of arc, but we're not gonna go over that. However, nonetheless, there you go. There we have our integer primitive types. In Rust. You can also do something like writing integer literals in any form, but I'm also not going to cover that too because I don't think it's as important as just getting the concept of this stuff. So let's get into the next data type, and that brings us to Booleans. So to show or represent a Boolean, I can say let A equal true, pretty much like a lot of other programming languages. Let B equal false. As you can see, VS Code both 100% defaulted those to Boolean, but if you want to be able to specifically clear it like that yourself, do exactly that. Let C colon base bool equal true. And there you go. That is how you would do Booleans. And that brings us to the car data type in Rust. And how would we create one of those? Let C equal one tick mark, Z close tick mark, semicolon. Defaulted us to a car data type. To do that specifically yourself, let's try let Z colon base char or car, however you say it over there, whatever side of the world you live. Same exact result. Now, if you don't know what the car data type or char data type is, think of it like a string, but just one specific character. And we know that it's not a string in Rust because we have to use tick marks instead of open and close quotes, okay? In JavaScript, you can use tick marks or open and close quotes for strings. You could use them both. Now, obviously we have a string data type as well, but that is actually not one of Rust's scalar data types. String actually has a class in Rust, but we're not gonna worry about that in the scope of this video. However, what we are gonna worry about is back to the casting. And since we know how to deal with some basic data types now, I think we all can handle the casting. So let's look at that. Like I showed you guys earlier on the video, Rust doesn't provide any type of implicit type conversion between primitive types. So you can't just on the fly change from one type to the other, but we can do explicit type conversions, what is actually called casting, by utilizing the as, A-S, not ass, all right? The as keyword. And something to note out there for my C programming minded people, the rules for converting between integral types follow C conventions pretty much. Now I said pretty much, all right? Not 100%. So let's make a floating point number, sure, 60. 5.321. By the way, you notice how I have the underscore F32 there? That's how we know we're going to have an F32 type floating point number. It's essentially a decimal, right? But let's say I want to convert this from this F32 type to maybe an I32 or a U32. So if I say let integer, call this guy integer, equal decimal as U8, save that, and I print Mr. Integer here. Cargo build, cargo run. There you go. It's no longer 65.3.42.4321, whatever number that is. It's now just 65, right? 
We just did that by using this as keyword. Now, obviously, I'm declaring a new variable and I'm setting equal to that. But if I did not have this as and then the specific type we wanted to cast it to typed out here, this would not work correctly, which I will show you guys. 0.4321. Is that an integer? No. And is you guys saw this probably too. VS Code already had like showing us that it's just automatically getting defaulted as a F32. All right. I hope to help somebody out there. Like the video if you enjoyed it or not. I don't care either way. I'm about to go to sleep. See ya.